Want to get new clients, grow your business, and meet successful people from which you can learn tons of new things? Then you should start networking. When you do it right, networking can open tons of new opportunities. You can get advice from industry leaders, find potential business partners, meet future customers, etc. That's why I'm going to share with you one of our successful networking called email template. If you don't trust me, check these results. 82% open rate, 35% click rate, and a 17% reply rate. Let's get into it. We are going to analyze a three-step email sequence that generated 50 leads. This campaign targeted social media agencies, and the objective was to network and build partnership with them. Step one, first email. Here's the first email she sent. So why this email works? First, the subject line is personalized and sparks curiosity. You are the good surprise of the day, first name. It makes you ask yourself, why am I the good surprise of the day? It says the tone of the email, friendly and not salesy at all. A networking email should always be friendly because the goal is to build a relationship and not to sell a product or a service. Then she gives a compliment in her intro line. I came across your LinkedIn profile, first name, and loved it. And she backs up what she says with a personalized image where you would see your LinkedIn profile on the computer. The picture catches your attention right away and you're like, oh, she really means it. And by being in the picture herself, she makes it feel more personal. The compliment plus her smile makes you interested about what she has to say. Then she adds a nice breaker to warm up the relationship. She did her research and wrote sentences that are unique for each individual. You can do this by checking your prospect's LinkedIn profile like she did and mention one of their recent activity or their work. This is what moves personalization to the next level. It shows your prospect that you do did your research and that you care about them. Then she moves to her pitch. I'm very curious to know your best practices in digital marketing and I'm sure you would be a great source of inspiration to help me move up a gear on the social networks. I take care of our community, the largest sales automation Facebook community in the world, and I would like to test new approaches to create more impact. So she says she'd like to exchange about best practices in digital marketing and again gives a compliment at the same time, saying their work would be a great source of inspiration for her. By doing this, you position your prospect as an expert in their field, you make them feel good about themselves and show them how precious their advice is. And she keeps complimenting in her CDA saying it would be incredible if they could share the experience with her so she reinforces her message. The CDA is very clear and straightforward. She asks if the person would be available for a 15-minute chat on first date. If not, she leaves the prospect the choice to choose a convenient day on her calendly. The prospect only has to answer yes or no or just click on the link to choose. Very easy to complete. She ended with a PS which is rare seeing someone do that. What most of people don't know is that the PS message is often the first part of the email the prospect will read. It draws their attention, so it's a great way to add additional value and or show you're a human being. Here she made it funny with a sentence about herself. I really like steamed dumplings and I'm a Rocky Balboa fan. It feels more personal. Then she also explains that she didn't want to show off and talk about herself directly in her email, so she does it here, mentioning her job and what her company does. Because we saw she made the core of her email about her prospect. She reiterates she'd love to have a chat, but this time she adds value saying she'd like to show them how they help agencies create Irish campaigns that stand out. So what can you take away from this? First, personalization. This kind of message doesn't feel to me at all. Second, add your own writing style. Be yourself, be authentic. You can see she has her own way of speaking and of making jokes. That adds authenticity to her emails and make them unique. Step two, first follow-up. If people didn't reply to this email, she sent a first follow-up three days later. She kept the same subject line to appear on the same thread as the first email. Then she opted for another personalized image. We love this coffee template a lot at Lemlist because it always catches people's attention. She's literally waiting for you with a coffee cup with your name on it. She even sees it in her intro. The coffee is waiting for you. What are you waiting for? It creates this image in your head where you're having a coffee with her. Smart. Let's move to her pitch. Seriously, I imagine Imagine company name takes a lot of energy from you. But if you find a moment in your calendar to tell me about your latest content creation successes, you'd make a happy girl. I could show my boss that I'm an expert in social networks. So there, inevitably, you will have to increase me and then that that makes pretty Christmas presents. She refers to what she was asking in her last email. And it's a funny way to ask for something. It doesn't sound salesy at all. On the contrary, she sounds like a friend. She acknowledges they must be busy with work, you value their time, and the joke is relatable. Wanting to impress your boss to get a raise. 
Then she offers a prospect to share the tips and tricks that have made them climb to $3 million in ARR in less than three years. So she's not only asking a prospect for the advice, but she's also adding value by offering to share theirs. She adds credibility, stating the strategy made them reach $3 million in ARR in less than three years. She goes further by asking which niche is them best so she can share a template that is the most aligned with her prospect strategy. CDA is not about having a call here. She brings value first. She tries another way to make the prospect reply to her email. If they click on the email and they find it helpful, it will encourage them to respond to her email, wanting to know more. Again, it's her style that makes this email works. They're different and make you feel good after reading it. She positions herself more as a friend than a sales rep. Step three, second follow-up. She sent an ultimate follow-up for the last people who didn't respond. Again, she kept the same subject line to be under the same thread as the previous emails. For the pitch, what we have here is a kind and friendly reminder. Ah yes, first name, I forgot to tell you. Between the rise of a Facebook community or teams who have double done in six months and a new YouTube channel for CEO, I have plenty of tips to share, including the big failures to avoid in order to succeed. She brings an update and brings value at the same time because she learned a lot of things between those two follow-ups and that could be very valuable to the prospect. It feels personal because it leaves the impression she thought about you, that this could help you. She ends with a touch of humor in her CDA. It was my last attempt to convince you to book a quick slot with me, I promise. She won't be sending more emails because she doesn't want to be pushy or spammy. But she has a calendar so they can book a slot with her if they change their mind. All of these emails performed really well. The first email generated 36 calls, the second 20 calls, and the third 8 calls. Next time you're networking, try personalization and adding your own personality to the mix. It works wonders. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments. Subscribe to get a Lemnister Award. I heard it's better than an Oscar.